So here with John Fury, and we're setting the record straight. So first off, John, how have you been? There's a lot been going on recently. Yeah, a lot of people have been talking, shouting, screaming, but yet there's no genuine written offers come to my, my address or my people. So listen, they can all shout, they can all scream, but action speaks louder than words. Put the money across. Like I've said, it's a business. And uh, let's get on with it. But they don't seem to want to do that. They seem to want to shout and scream, calling me out and trying to embarrass me, which they could never do that. Could never embarrass a man like me because I've been through too much. But no written offers to my lawyers. Nothing. It's just talk. Yeah. Idle chat. Yeah, because it seems every man and his dog's calling you out these days. Well, do, you have a, do you have a message for them using your name for their various agendas? Well, that's all they're doing, isn't it? And it's a good point that done because of uh, that's what they do. They think by mentioning me and people paying them a few hundred quid to do a podcast to run me down. Oh, I want to fight John Fury. I think this, I think that. You know what? Think has caused people a lot of problems in life, hasn't it? Thinking and doing is two different things, but people don't seem to understand that today, do they? But you know what? All those people, I can say, who think they're hard men, all them calling me out, hear this. The way they've gone about it is unprofessional. So therefore, it's caused me to have an instant dislike for these people. So therefore, why would I want to make them any money? Mm. You know, but what they can do, have a nice barn at the side of me, all them think that I'm bothered about fighting, come down, me and him will walk in the barn and the best man will come out, just me and him. We'll shut the door, we'll lock ourselves in and the best man will come out of that barn, won't it? Yeah. No money, there's no nothing, there's no fame, there's nothing, only a good hiding for them kind of people. That's if they think they can take me and I tell you they can't. It's interesting you say that about fame. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at Carl Froch's YouTube channel, his entire history. Yeah. Do you want to guess the two mo two of the most popular videos on his channel? I beg, I just don't know. The two of the past month for that feature. Yeah. Well, there you go. Then. Does that not say all about these people? People today, they want to mention me because I'm Tyson's father and Tommy's father. Tyson's at the top of his game because if I wasn't their father. They wouldn't be calling me out. They wouldn't want to know you. They wouldn't come. Where have they been in the last 30 years, these people? I've been around boxing all my life. Why didn't they call me out then? It's only since the fame with the boys has come about that they think they can get someone out of it. But you know what? I'm not as daft as I look, me. And what I say about those people, if they was to do it properly and get around the table and organise it properly, there wouldn't be a problem. But the way they've gone about it to make themselves look like jolly big balls behind a camera, I won't give them $2. But what they can do is come down, have a big empty barn there, what locks up, me and them will walk in the barn and the best man will come out with no old bad. But I'll give you a disclaimer, serious arm can apply. <laughs> can I care? Serious arm can I care yeah. on both sides, but I don't give a damn, because yeah. fighting's my game. I'm old, but you'll know you've been in a war, let's put it that way, because I will not give up. Never. If I knock Spark out, I can't carry on. But all the time I'm both, all the time I'm compass, mentors, and able, I'm there throwing. Excellent. So, I want to play a quick guessing game with yourself now. This is completely unbiased statistics yeah. on Google. So, a few of the people who've called you out recently, I'm just going to give you their names, mm. and I want you to guess how many times they're searched per month in Google. So, starting off with Joe Egan, how many times do you reckon he's searched for monthly worldwide in Google? Well, probably before he's mentioned my name, very little. But since he's mentioned my name, talk about John Fury, you're going to get Googled, aren't you? That's why they do it, isn't it? So, you tell me. So, it's 2,600. So, 2,600 searches per month. Carl Froch, do you think his monthly search volume is? Again, nobody's interested in retired champions, are they? It's all current, you know, because if they had anything about them, they wouldn't be doing podcasts now for a living, would they? You know, I think they're spent up, don't you? To live this exotic lifestyle. No disrespects, it's all good stuff, but it costs money. <laughs> you know, yeah. if I don't know, tell me, make me laugh. So his search, monthly search volume is 25,000. Yeah. Chase Damore, 
He was another one per pub like yourself and Roman. Mm. What do you think his monthly search volume is? God on. So this is 51,000. The reason I mention this, what do you think your monthly search volume is? <laughs> About 10. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's 108,000. Wow. Well, so based on them statistics, straight straight that's straight 108,000 people Google you per month in worldwide. Well, so if you look at them, yeah. Joe Egan, if, you did, if he, he did want to have a fight, a paid fight, is your, your purse should be 50 times his based oh, on... Oh, listen, I, to be honest with you, I don't think they can afford me, tell you the yeah. truth. The only people I'm looking at, to be fair, who can really bring the numbers I'm interested in is Mike Tyson. If I don't get him, I'm not really interested in these kind of men because I'm not cheap. And for me to climb back in the ring with any of these men, it's in the M's, not the T's, you know? So that's where we're looking at. And I don't think they can put it up or they won't put it up. You know, and like I say, I've had two bets now with these so-called multi, multi-millionaires and both of them's Welsh. Both of them's Welsh. <laughs> can you imagine if I did that? Oh, I've had a bet and John Fury's not paid. Well, my name of Whooping Lights as a Welsher, a no good bum, you know, don't take this man's word for nothing. You know, what are these people? I don't think they've got what they say they got. I think it's all crap. You know, because me, I'm honest as the day is long. I haven't got a lot of money. You know, I'm, I'm not bothered what people think. I mean, my sons are very rich. But that don't mean say I'm rich. But I wouldn't. What they've got is theirs. What I've got is mine. But what I've got is good health, contentment and peace. And I'm happy until people start winding me up. But even though after about 10 minutes, I can laugh it off and think, you know what? Why am I giving me sense to these cowboys? But it's all fun and games. Yeah. Keeps me into it. And that's why I want to show you them statistics because you think it's well, just I'm you amazed. are. You know, all I can say is thank you to all those people who Google me, you know, but I'm going to make it even more interesting for them as well. You know, because this year when I get going, doing different bits of things, you know, I'm going to bring a bit more to my life, you know, and uh, try and help the genuine people out there. Not the cowboys looking for a free ride on somebody else's back. That's never going to happen for these guys. Let them have the five minutes of fun. Let people keep paying them the 500 quid a time to run me down on a podcast. You know, because even, even these people today, they get hold of my sons. They pretend to want to talk to my sons just to talk about me. My lads are a bit like me, daft. Yeah. They don't understand how it works properly. You know, what they can't get out of me, they're going to my sons to get. You know, but they don't know. It's a, what they're not used to living in, a sordid world. I've been in shark-infested waters since I've been born. You know, and I've had these people all around me all my life. And I've learned from experience. You know, I fell over a lot of times. I've crashed a lot of times. But I'm still alive. Excellent. So I think we've cleared that up. Before I move yeah. on to other questions, any other final comments you want to give to all these people who are calling you out saying... This Listen, there's not a problem. You know, they're never going to get what they think they're going to get out of me because I'm not that daft. And when I don't like you, I ain't giving you two, Bob. I don't care, unless you pay me a lot of money in the M's. But that's what it's got to be, a awful lot of money because I think I'm worth it. I think I'm worth it. And at the end of the day, I'm willing to back it up. But let, let me say this again. Without written offers, contracts to my lawyer, you can shout and talk as much as you want. I'm making no more videos. I'm not responding to this anymore because I'm doing it every five minutes. You know, because at the end of the day, I know the majority of people out there don't like me, but the ones that do, I thank them. Even the haters will love them, and I'll pray for them. You know, because it's just jealousy, isn't it? It's jealousy because you've got an old guy like me in the latter in, in, in the in, in the the last days of my life, the last well years of my life. Let's put it because that's my age. It can pop off any time, can't you? No one knows the hour of the day, but they're thinking he's never won anything in his life. You know, he's just a bum. Yet people are interested in more than me, and I, you know that's something I don't get. You know, but at the end of the day, good luck to the people. They must find me more interested in them because they're one trick ponies, aren't they? Just talking shite on a podcast, hoping somebody's going to listen. But you know what? Let them carry on. Doesn't bother John Fury. <laughs> so then, uh, moving on, uh, Tyson, <laughs> your son. Yeah. Uh, you're not involved. I know you're not involved. No. In, I know you're not involved in this camp, but um, he's looking in good shape. What do you What do you make of his physique? Is uh, he looking quite muscular? He's looking good. To be honest with you, you know, <laughs> they uh, they said I said they would have to impress me. And hands up, <laughs> they did impress me. <laughs> he did look well, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. You know, I was very sick about the cut because when I seen the shape he was in, he must have dedicated. 
you know, and that pleased me immensely. And I always said 70% of Tyson was too much, but we looked like we were getting more than 70% there because he looked great, didn't he? Oh, looked the best shape, I think. Listen, I think it's the best shape he's been in since he won the title, mm. you know, to be fair with you. So, yeah, I was impressed. They did the work, you know, and I wasn't one qualm about nothing. So, good luck to him. He looked in great shape. Excellent. In the time he had to get in shape, yeah. which was... Yeah, short notice. Short notice. Yeah. So, yeah, incredible. Excellent. And he's recently said he's looking to have five more fights. And given the speed fights happen in these days, often in Saudi, do you think he could actually get those wrapped up, completed in the next 18 months? Even sooner, potentially. In my opinion, I don't think you can look, you can look five fights in the future. Not at this level. Because it all depends on the result, doesn't it? Because... In the ideal world, his world, that'd be probably great. But you just don't know in, your, in my experience of life what's right today will probably be wrong tomorrow. But if all goes well, let's say, it's doable, yeah? It's doable. Nice, nice. Um, so moving on to your other son, Roman, in a few weeks. He's going to yeah. be out in Saudi. Can you give us a preview of that? How you expect it to go? What you're looking to do about obviously giving away any secrets? Um, you expected another knockout win? Well, Roman, he's a, uh, I've never seen a kid but works harder than him, you know, and he's in the gym every day. He's had no car at the moment, so I've been training him here at uh, Brian Gardner's Jimmy Nichols. And uh, big up to Brian, big shout out to Brian, anyway, great fella, great gym. And he's been good enough to let us train there. But Roman, he can punch. Southpaw, cracking power, you know, he's a good game kid, and I see him going far in the game because of his attitude towards it, the way he trains, you know, and he's sparring good quality kids, what's coming from all over the UK, you know, and he's looking really good. You know, he's got power, you know, and with power, you got a lot to work with, haven't you? You know, and he's just, he's getting match right, he's not getting chucked in over his head. But I am expecting him to knock a lot more out by knockout victory than points because he's got that kind of power. And once he settles down and starts believing in himself, because don't forget, he's only had three bouts ever, never boxed amateur, nothing. He only started training in lockdown because he was 20 stone. And for, for, for what he's done in a short time, incredible. Turned his life around, hasn't he? Yeah. And I'm, what... and I'm proud of him for doing that. Because obviously when you were training with Tommy at yeah. Tremolis, I know Roman was there helping yeah, he's, Roman and Tommy has always been in the same camp, training side by side. Because one bump buzzes off the other. One's trying to outdo the other all the time. It's good competition. They bring the best out one another, them two. You know, so at the end, it's good to have a training partner, isn't it? Wants as fit as you and as strong as you and want what you want. So, yeah, I just see good things happening for him. You know, whether he's going to win a world title or not is another matter. That's a long way in the future if it ever happens, which we don't know. But at the moment, this moment in time, I'm more than pleased with him. Yeah. I think he's a decent prospect. He's yeah. only 27. 27, He's, he's yeah. got years ahead of him. Well, yeah. in today's world. Yeah, in today's world. If yeah. it, like I say, we're, we're back when I was boxing, if you was 31 or 2, you was at the end of your career. But now, 42, you're just coming into it, aren't you? Have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of heavyweights like these days are old, aren't we? Yeah. Heavy, is it heavyweight? Or is he, uh, who's away? He's heavyweight. heavyweight. I've moved him yeah. up from that, yeah. But he's not a big heavyweight. He's six foot two and a half. He's about 15 stone five. Yeah. But you know, he can move around the ring. He's got good coordination, good power, good brain, thinking about it. And every fight he has, he's just going to improve and come on in leaps and bounds, hopefully. Yeah. Brilliant. I know recently we spoke about Tommy's hand injury and he's actually recovering nicely. Is it coming along? Well, you know, I seen a video of the operation the other day and it was scary, you know. So, um, I think the specialist said it was uh, one of the worst cases I've done. And, uh, but he did say it was a success. And it's just time. It is healing, mm. but he's frustrated at the minute because he can't train. And when you're used to training for being five years old, when you can't hit the bags, you can't do the pads, you can't spar, it's very frustrating. You know, but I just said, put your feet up, spend some time with your missus and kid, and enjoy the time off. You're just 24-year-old, and just these things happen in life. He's in the healing process. But everything's going well, yes. Brilliant. And thank you for asking. That's good to hear. Yeah. So, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, influence of fighting, is that what you kind of, when he's back, you're looking at those types of fights or you're thinking, get back into kind of 
the market, I guess traditional boxing. If traditional boxing was paying well, it wouldn't be a problem. Like I said in Tommy's case, we will fight anybody out there today if it makes business sense, you know, and the conventional boxing from where Tommy is, he's 10 and 0, but he's not won any title, something like that. You're getting paid nothing. It's not worth bothering with. Because I feel so sorry for these kids. What's just starting off as pros, they've got 3 and 4 and 0 and all that. You know, they're better off with a job of work. Because when it takes you six weeks to train, you're working at the same time, they're not getting the best out of it because I've done it. I've been there and done all that myself. I mean, you can never get the best out of yourself because you're doing two jobs at once. And they don't get paid enough, you know. What you need to do it right, if you get a good prospect, you need a good sponsor who's prepared to say to you, right, forget everything, concentrate on your job. And if you can't get that, it's not worth bothering with, you know. And Tommy had a stroke of luck, really, because it was meant to be. And I always say, what's for you will not pass you by. Love Island come along, made him a, an household name, you know, and uh, it gave him a good platform for people to want to do something with him. Yeah. And that's where we've took it. And like, like now we're just... Do what we've got to do, train and fight. I look at these things, if it makes good business sense, we're doing it. I don't care if he's fighting Mickey Mouse. <laughs> if it's good business sense, we're in. Yeah. That's what it is. It's all about fun and games today. You know, because the world's too serious, isn't it? You know, and at the end of the day, if Jake Paul, Logan Paul and co can generate what Tommy's happy with, where's the problem? People's in the fight game for one reason, to change the family's lives, to make their lives better. So if you can have an easy route or an hard route, yeah. to pick the hard route, you'd need a, your brain testing, wouldn't you? Yeah. But if you've got to go the hard route, go down it. But if you haven't, you haven't. And that's my job, to make sure the route and the path is the right one. Brilliant. And then looking ahead to May, when uh, the fight with your son Tyson's going to take place, Anthony Joshua's come out and said he's ready to step in if... I bet he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be ready. <laughs> For that kind of money. Yeah, if, if um, Fury doesn't make it, or of whoever. Um, I thought he was fighting Angano. Yeah, so that's in March. Well... Is it? Yes, in March. He's got to get past Angano yeah. first, <laughs> which is a tall order. <laughs> How do you... Pre what's your thoughts, like a quick preview? How do you see that one going? Sure, he's a danger man, Angano, isn't he? He's a big dude. Believes in himself, fit and strong, able, can punch. He's there in your face, don't mind the tear up. He's got to get past him before he starts. And to be honest with you, Usyk has already beat AJ twice. If he can't beat a man, if you've lost twice, is there going to be that much interest in a third fight? It's only going to be the same thing, isn't it? Usyk outpointing him, you know? And uh, I don't know, people just want to see different stuff, don't they? I think what they want to see is what they're geared up to see, Tyson and him. And Tyson will not be pulling out, I'll tell you that now. Yeah. It's going to be a, an amazing fight. Yeah. Um, so have you seen Tyson since he's come back to you? No. No. No, I haven't seen him, no. Uh, and then just a quick preview on Zhang versus Joseph Parker. How do you see that one going? In, that's in March, so the undercard. In and yes, that's the undercard to knock out chaos. Or it's the co-main event, Joseph Parker versus Zile Zhang. Who's the main event? Uh, that'll be Joshua and Garner. Okay, it's in yeah. Saudi. Yeah. Well, I'm out there, aren't I? Well, yeah. I'm there with Roman, so... Well, fair play to Joe Parker. He's got a set. <laughs> and he's probably getting well paid. But why not? But Zhang, difficult guy to beat. You know, I'm a big fan of Zhang. I like what he does. Six foot six, 20 stone, south book and punch. He doesn't do nothing exciting. What he does is clinical. I just think he can... Uh, he can do the business. But Joe, again, a younger man. He's only 31 or two year old. He's a fresher man. He's a younger man by eight years. And Joe has just shown you, hasn't he, what he can do. So Joe could easily pull an upset and beat Zhang the same way as he beat Wilder. I'm not going back on what I said. Wilder was shot to pieces, never threw a punch. You know, a kid at infant school could have probably beat Wilder on that night because Tyson bashed him up that much. He's not got over it. Took every bit of fight out of him because it was three hard in encounters. But he did get to do Joe. He was in the right place at the right time. But I think Zhang is a different opposition. Still fresh, still strong, still hungry. Not got a hundred million mile on the clock. And he's banging with both hands and he's a bloody southpaw. 
<laughs> but great fight. Big up to Joe Parker. He's getting him with the, with the right guys. He must be getting well paid. So he's making good business sense. So the kid's there. Joe Parker is capable of beating anybody. He's been a former world champion. He's got good boxing skills. He's got plenty of bottle. He's tough. Mm. So he's capable yeah. of springing upsets with anybody. And he's only 31 as 31 well. 31 or two, young yeah. man. Yeah. Young man. He's had a lot of fights, like, in them in them times. But I just think, Joe, he can rise to, rise to the occasion, can he? You know, and he got in there a wilder. He never got phased, did he? He never, got, he never let the occasion get to him. He did what he had to do professionally and done it well. Good luck to him. Airplay. It was a clinical performance. Oh, yeah. 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 So brilliant. And then moving on uh, to, you know, Johnny Nelson has been in the media talking about mm. he has people inside Tyson's camp. <laughs> Spencer Brown said that he thinks there's a rat in Tyson's camp and we'll bleep this person's name out. But looking, this, you know, guys published it on a, a YouTube channel saying it was, let's make sure I've got this right. What do you make of that? Do you do you think Tyson needs to review his training team or? Well, I know <laughs> had him for Tommy and he did us a favour. Mm. We got him with, uh, I think, with 15 days left in camp because it was absolute washout. The man we had before him was an absolute cowboy. Mm. And, uh, well, he nearly ruined Tommy's training camp for KSI. You know, but we got <laughs> pulled it round. You know, so I can only speak well again. Yeah. You know, and I think he's just total bullshit. He's a nice kid. You know, he'd been through a lot himself, you know, and at the end of the day, people can point fingers, can't they? It is absolutely, I'm telling you, rubbish. He's a nice kid. Got a lot of time for him. Nice. So that set the record straight. Yeah, up. listen. Yeah. I can only speak as I find. I don't know him personally. I only know him through what he does. Dietitian. You know, so at the end of the day, he does a good job. He knows his job. So, yeah, hope he gets plenty of work. But no, it's rubbish. Brilliant. And then... Moving on, there's a couple last questions now. So Usic's manager, uh, I don't know if you saw the recent interview where he was sat there, did you see it? Where it was Tyson and His Excellency Turkey Isle Sheikh, and then you had uh, Usic with his manager. Um, he was saying Tyson's a coward, he's deliberately done this cut to get out of the fight, all of that kind of... Do you just think there's clutching at straws by saying things like that, trying to... Well, again, I'm surprised men of their experience at top level being around top fighters can even talk like that, mm. you know, because it's absolutely rubbish. It's silly, you know, and uh, they're just making themselves look stupid and embarrassing themselves with them kinds of accusations. But I think now they're worried. They've always been worried because when they seen the shape Tyson was in, they've all thought, hang on, we've dropped a clanger here because they thought they're going to see a Tyson who hadn't trained. But you know what? That's where you can get caught out, isn't it? Thinking you know too much. And like he went and said, Usyk, he can't fight in April because it interferes with his uh, uh, training schedule. <laughs> what does that mean? But them, his team, they just make themselves look stupid, don't they? Because they was frightened, they was afraid. They knew that their man was going to get smashed to bits. I seen the shape Tyson was in. He was in for it, Usyk. And all those people... Who's riding you, sex pecker, thinking he's going to do the job? Well, let me tell you that he can't do the job. He can't. Because Tyson was tunnel visioned on all his haters, because he's an eight campaign going at the minute with the Furies. Oh, do we give a toss? No, we don't. Accidents happen. The man said what happened, the sparring partner. Why don't you just let the men get on with it on the 18th of May instead of talking all crap? Is that going to. Talking rubbish and all his accusations and shit talk, is that going to change anything? It's not changing note, so shut it, keep it buttoned, and let them fight on the 18th of May, and then it'll be decided. Until then, shut your mouth up. Talking crap, cut his own eye. See, there's nothing out of my nutsack could do anything like that. Nothing. He could saw the leg off and they still fight. Because he said, he said, uh, I think Turkey confirmed that he went to him and said, I still want to fight. So Tyson said that. He said he was still wanting to fight. He'll fight. Tyson went. The full distance with his eye off from the third round with Wallin. But what they're hoping to do, open the cut and referee will stop it. They're in Saudi. <laughs> Referees ain't so keen out there to stop anything, especially when there's millions and millions involved. Because believe me, <coughs> he's not the man you said. 
He's a good boxer at his own weight. There's weight classes for a reason and there's levels to the game. He's a great little boxer, but so is Tyson. He's a great little boxer. Tyson's a great big boxer. I'm in shape. Yeah. I don't see a man touching Tyson. I don't, especially him. I've seen what he can do. The minute Tyson goes to work on that body and brings him up to the middle around the sides, gets him on the end of that jab, and he's like elastic band in front of him. <laughs> no. AJ was there to be it. All the other men was. Tyson ain't going to be there to be it, is he? And once he starts missing, the life drains out of him. And it's a 12 round fight, and I know what kind of bottle of mark Tyson's got. It's unmeasurable. Unmeasurable. Brilliant. So, wrapping it up then, John, yeah. you've set the record straight on many things. Mm. It's nearly spring. You got any plans, any spring, summer plans? Summer plans? Oh, dear. No. Same. Same old, same old. You know, I've got a little old shepherds that have just finished it. There's a bit of a new one, you know, for something to do. It's took me about three and a half months to do it. <laughs> With the help of some other proper carpenters and whatnot. But... I'm just going to chill out when I can, yeah. you know, because there's nothing left for me now in life. There's nothing I want. I can't name nothing I want. And a man that doesn't want anything can't be bought, can he? Can't be thought, bought. And everybody will lend you a brolly on a dry day, won't they? But they want it back when it's raining, quick enough. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't bother. I'm just going to do my thing. And whatever makes me happy and gives me peace, I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep living till I die. But again, if all these mugs again, clear it all, I'll say it once again, if you don't like me that much, there's a barn at the side here, step in it with me. Lock us in, and the best man will walk out, no holds barred. But again, a disclaimer, serious arm, can I care, or will I care? Put that in your pipe and smoke it, tossers. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, I think that's a good week, that's a wrap. It's a wrap, buddy. Take care. Brilliant.